All right, everybody, welcome to the stream. We're back. Listen, we got a lot of people in the building. People are excited. Yo, first out, first off, shout out to Bianca. You are always in the chat. You're always on these comments. Listen, we see you. We appreciate you. Let's go. Lars was here super early recording, and I appreciate that energy, Lars. I saw you in the building. Yvonne, we got you. What's going on? Hey, Danilo, good afternoon to you as well. Dimitri in the building. Dimitri with the shreds, though. I see you with that. Look at the shreds. Let's go. Michael Faith in the building. What's going on, Michael? Good to see you as well. Hold on. Solving problems in the building. Welcome back. Good to have you. All right, Marek. Bonjour. Comment ça va? Good to have you. Let's go. All right, Enrique in the building. I'm sorry. I'm just shouting out people. One second. Hold on. I got to keep shouting out people. And then we'll, we'll get there. Almost, almost, almost. Mufiz, good to see you. All right. Enrique, good to see you. All right. We got Ansenada, good to see you. Javier, what's going on? All right. All right. All right. Give, give people a shout out. I grew up uh, in the Orlando area, so I'm from near there. Oh, let's go. Uh, so, Mark, <laughs> yes. why, why don't you have a Mastodon account? <laughs> I'm a I'm a never mastodoner. I am a never mastodoner. What does that mean? I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I'll never do it. I, I'm going to go Mark, down with the ship. Mark has all sorts of opinions on mastodon. The ship is already at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I believe it. But I'm going to stick on Twitter until Twitter is completely like toast. I will just stick on there. Uh, but it's all are, good. Are we already there? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's still running, though. It's still running. So <laughs> <laughs> until it's no longer running. All right. Uh, all right. Let's we go. <laughs> We're going to play some games. Oh, wait. We got to tell people what's going on today. Friends, this is our last stream of the year. So first and foremost, we got to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting the stream, helping us grow the stream. Jeremy and I... Really appreciate your support. We had so much fun. Jeremy, what was your favorite stream that we did this year? I like when we played What the Golf. That was uh, so much fun. Yeah, and I feel like people actually really liked when we made spades and started switching to programming <laughs> during these streams. So yeah. it makes me think that going into next year, maybe we do uh, maybe we do more. Maybe we do some programming streams and some game streams. So we should do the googly thing here. And set a meeting and like come up with a one page here and like <laughs> <laughs> and, and plan our next year as much as we like to be free form. Maybe we need to. Gotta gotta have you know. those uh, artifacts, you know. The need those proof. artifacts. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, Jessica back in the building. Okay. Yeah. Hello, Jessica, Jessica is here to save us because we don't really have a good way to play games <laughs> between Mark and I right now because my graphics card died and Mark was using Stadia. Oh! <laughs> oh, it is toast. Stadia is toast. Yeah. Um, oh, so Pete LaMonica says this. Wait, I'm literally <laughs> writing a one pager at this very moment. Mm -hmm. How many pages well is done. it? Well done. How many pages yeah. is it, Pete? I bet it's, I bet it's like four. <laughs> right, exactly. All right, um, we're gonna play some games. Uh, but I will say this before I forget: uh, my favorite stream was probably the one I had the most fun with was Uno, and I think just the chaos of trying to build Uno and like get everything running in like an hour that was a lot of fun. So I agree with you, Jeremy, that we should do those programming kind of like programming challenge streams. And but I also like playing games, and people also like the vibe of us playing games and answering questions. So there we go. All right. So Jessica, I, are you going to actually play on your Steam Deck today? Technically, yes. Uh, I am going to be streaming from my Steam Deck, but not using a Stream Deck while I'm streaming my Steam Deck. So I do have a Stream Deck here. So I there, do too. There is, there is one involved. <laughs> <laughs> I have one, but it is not hooked up because this is my workstation. Um, Wait, but, but yeah. you're using a stream deck to to stream your Steam Deck. <laughs> I am not to the but game I stream. I could do that. I just chose not to today. Uh, 
my 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 stream deck is still in its box but my steam deck <laughs> is here <laughs> Javier said, say that two more times. I cannot. <laughs> All right, let's get to the game. And so here's what we'll do. We'll uh, play some games. Oh, wait, that's not the one I want. I want this one. No, this one. There we go. Not, that's not it. It's not the layout I'm looking for. How do I get Jessica's to be the like main one? You're the one who always does this. <laughs> I know, and today is just not doing what I was hoping for. All right, so You're, that's not almost quite, right? Just swap, oh, just swap you and the witness. Okay, almost there. Okay, look, wait. everyone, it's oh. December. It's been a long year. <laughs> Come on, awesome. how do we switch? Switch. Oh my god. Oh, oh, I'll need to figure out. Uh, let's see. I'm one of these people. Uh, where's the controls? Oh, you this invert. Time. Yes, I do. Uh, I actually don't know. Oh, why. you know why the problem is, Jessica? Because you joined as this thing. That's why we nope, can't put that's... you as the main screen because you're not sharing your screen. You joined as the witness. Yes, that is that is my webcam. Yes, for 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 the second machine that is. Uh... Yeah, you're not sharing your screen. Okay, friends, there that's all right. So. We'll, we'll, we'll have the witness playing. Uh, during the stream, you can like ask us questions about Angular. You can ask us questions about Google. You can ask us questions about Angular. And, uh, what, what if I, I want to ask questions? I never get to ask any questions. Ask some questions, Jeremy. Yeah, I want to ask, like, uh, has anybody who's watching the stream, did you watch the ng-conf talk that Alex Rickabaugh and I gave earlier this year? I don't remember how this works. <laughs> I think that's no, no. That's no, yeah, yeah. It. That is it. Okay, yeah, okay. We're good. We're good. Okay. Wait. So the witness is made by the same person who made Braid, right? That's right, Jonathan Blow. Yeah, I've heard he can sometimes be a jerk, though. I've heard that too. Mm. Okay, so I see. I watched him once. Uh, I was curious if he would like Outer Wilds because. Uh, Outer Wilds is an absolute masterpiece and is a similar kind of idea to The Witness where there's kind of this mystery that you're unraveling just kind of in the world around you. And the only thing that changes about you as you play the game is that you understand more. And I thought he would like Outer Wilds and apparently he was disparaging of it. And so I kind of wrote him off after that. <laughs> mm. Okay, I can feel that. Jessica, did you trace the puzzle backwards to figure out where to go? Of course I did. Nice. What, Look at that problem isn't that, solving. Isn't that what everybody does? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. But so hold on. So as we're talking, I'm going to tell you folks. Oh, OK, wait. Here's a good question for you. There you go. I know. Yeah, it was the design review okay. 10 years later. Yeah, I love that talk, actually. That's one of my favorite talks that we've given uh, as a team. And uh, that's a, such a great talk because it does so much to let people know that we're humans and not only humans, but we acknowledge that there are ways that we could have made different choices and why we made it at the time, but what other things we could have done. Yeah, I'm actually going to go find the link for it real quick and put it in the chat. Uh... Yeah, that sounds great. It is available online uh solving problems nope, that's wrong i want to zoom in on the witness but then we'll all go away so we'll go back and forth because of the way that we're trying to stream because otherwise the witness would be like two frames per second if it was streamed directly as a shared screen so we're trying to work around this okay. yes yeah <gasps> so, wait a minute hold on hold on pin, can is... you not just pin the witness as a speaker because you you had it set up the way we want with you on there earlier. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah, but I don't know why it's choosing me as the like main person. Why am I the spotlight? StreamYard just loves you. Yeah, see that's something I couldn't figure out is why am I the spotlight? Let me see. Cause that is what we want. You're right, but I gotta figure out how to make somebody else the spotlight. 
Let's see. see. Why are you not improving internationalization in Angular? We are. <laughs> <laughs> we have. I would say it's really good. What's your question about it, Grisha? Like, yeah. what do you need from it that you feel like we need to improve? Yeah, so I feel right like now, it is improved. So it's actually, that is actually one of the active projects we have is related to internationalization. But the, the thing is, it's a Google internal project that we're working on. So Google has its own unique internationalization stack. And our current work on internationalization is to improve that integration with Google's stack. But uh, there's, you know, there's always room for improvement in other things. So if there's anything that we you want to ask about specifically, we could talk more about that. I'm so focused on solving this. Um, yeah. Ooh, look at this question. I like this question. There we go. Fernando says, uh, hey, teacher, Angular have computer properties. Como Vue.js. And not now. today. Oh, so not today. Not today. <laughs> so if you watched, uh, so like today in Angular, right, you wouldn't have a computed property because Angular lets you just kind of bind to anything. So if you wanted to, you could bind to a function uh, that is kind of like a computed property. Uh, that does have some downsides, though, because that function is going to be reevaluated very, very frequently. Whereas in other frameworks like Vue, that reevaluation, uh, there's some, some memoization involved. So you're only doing uh, recomputation when something has actually changed most of the time. If you saw Alex and I's ng-conf talk, you, you saw that you know we're we're kind of reflecting on some of the bigger fundamental design decisions that went into Angular, and the reactivity model of Angular is one of those things we're thinking about, and we're very much aware of you know things like uh, Svelte system, Vue system, like all of these things, and thinking about what are the some of the ideas we can take and how they might fit into Angular. So. Stay tuned to all of our Angular channels for more information on that as it develops. I don't remember how these puzzles work. Oh, I do. Do you want me to tell you? <laughs> well, I know I solved it at one point, but uh, I don't think I've okay, found Okay, good question. Yeah. Let's see what let's let's see what Ross wants to know about. Is the long-term vision for the ES build CLI build to support ng serve and then run TSC NGC no emit for type checking? So the second let's let's split this into two two questions. One is will the ES build builder support ng serve? Yes, eventually, right? There right now. The dev server in Angular CLI is the Webpack dev server, but that is tightly coupled to using Webpack as kind of a build system and a bundler. And obviously, when you're using ES build, then you can't use the Webpack dev server. So there will be a replacement dev server for the ES build setup. The second part of this about running the compiler with no emit for type checking, I don't actually know the answer to that. I don't. I don't know enough yeah. about uh, the plans there. We have been exploring the idea of separating the type checking from the conversion of TypeScript to JavaScript just to get a faster edit refresh time. But I don't think there's anything concrete there yet. Oh yeah, Jessica figured it out. Yeah, I remember. I remember now. Let's see. All right, excellent there. question. Uh, oh, Coding Elegance asked something really awesome. Do you see SSR as a serious thing for the future? Yes. The uh, answer is yes. Uh, we need to also, I'll say the person, the person in the room right now, our guest streamer, is def, is uh, working on something or not that is related to this that can confirm that yes, it, we're serious people about this. Um, I, I think I can answer that question. Uh, yes, we're serious about this. <laughs> <laughs> we are. I say it jokingly because we're all at the end of the year and tired, but we are serious about this. Uh, this, this, this is a real thing. Same thing with this uh, from Alcatraz asks, does Angular Universal work with standalone components? 
I think it does. Are there any known limitations? But then there's an edit that says like with lazy loaded standalone components. We are not the universal is not fully compatible with standalone yet. I think you can use it, but you can't bootstrap with standalone yet. Like it doesn't fully support all of the APIs. So I know that's mm -hmm. we are we are looking at it and we're we're working on it. It's one of our yeah. remaining standalone priorities. I think I'm doing this one wrong. I saw a question there from Michael Faith. Now that the MDC components are nope. finally yeah. stable after so long, uh, what are the big things on the horizon for Angular Material? Uh, so, do you like theming? Because better theming. Um, so, none of this, I'm going to say, none of this uh, is a promise. Uh, this is all just kind of. This is, take this as a caveat for anything I say, really, is like things that we're thinking about and talking about. Uh, but I am not promising on any particular uh, delivery date. But uh, improved theming. So right now, Angular Material supports customization via theming for color, typography, and density. And the density is new with the MDC-based components. No, doesn't like that. And... Oh, oh. Um, we want to expand that to a broader range of things that you can customize. So uh, if you actually go and look at the source code of the components, you will see that a lot of the components are already based on this concept of material design tokens, which are very like low level. Like if you ever heard of like atomic design, you might be familiar with uh, this idea of just kind of breaking the design system down into very granular bits of information. And those design tokens give a lot more flexibility in terms of the things you can customize. So maybe that will include border radius. Maybe that will include more specific, mm -hmm. like being able to do not just like, here's the primary color for the button, but like here's the like different aspects of color, um, different spacing and things like that. And the that token system, mm -hmm. Oh, oh, you almost had it, Jessica. I almost had it. Almost you, had it. You just got to not wrap around that black one on the far right. Yeah. Um, um, wait, what What did I just do? I think I need yeah, to do this. Got it. Yeah, we got, got it. it. Yeah. Um, that token system will also enable us to support M3, the Material Design 3, and that we will get... Not like, I won't say for free, but well, like the majority of the work is in getting on that token-based theming system. And once we have that, it's relatively straightforward to support M3 because the difference between where we are now and M3 is we're just kind of like capture as like different sets of those token values. So that is probably the main thing that's up next. Um, we're also thinking about doing some more comprehensive performance improvements for the components, right? That UI components are one of those things where you just kind of like gradually add more and more features over time. And sometimes there's uh, little bits of performance slow down here and there. So maybe sitting down and doing a more comprehensive performance evaluation, looking at where we're doing reflows, looking at uh, the object allocations the components are doing, looking at how much DOM are we generating for each component, right? Like we've gotten some feedback that like, hey, maybe buttons don't need to generate a ripple div uh, before anyone actually clicks on it. So some things like that. that. And there's also more CDK primitives in the works. So uh, we have launched the CDK, like at this point recently, like dialogue, list box, and menu. Menu is really fantastic. Uh, you should go watch my video on directive composition API if you haven't seen it about how cool the menu is. And we're looking at doing combo box next. And I would like us to tackle like tabs and grid in the not too distant future, but that's a little still undecided. So uh, let's see what happens if I try to solve the other one here. Does it close that other door or does it leave it open? Uh, yeah, you're only, I think you're only going to be able to do one, right? Because you're yeah. like completing but the circle I, one way or the other. But I already opened the door. So I think it should be OK. Yeah. So Mark, uh, Web3, you've selected this question here. How how spicy are we going to be? <laughs> oh, can Mark hear us anymore? 
Yeah, my, I, I'm on mute this whole time. You're um, on mute this whole time. <laughs> so what I was going to say is that for Web3, I think that there is nothing for Angular to do to enable people to use Web3 because you're just working on your code on the blockchain. Angular would be a, a user interface to connect to a server like, you know, if you want to do it that way, right? So someone like Stephen Fluent, who works at Chainlink and is an Angular developer, has demos. Okay. Uh, well, he had some demos where <laughs> he had uh, used Angular as a front end, right? To, like, yeah. do Web3 stuff. So Web3, it's really up to you, Oluwasan. Like, you get to choose on your own adventure with that. Uh, Jeremy has a spicier take that... You may share if you if you desire. My my personal spicy take is Web three is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> right, that, that, I know that's that. actually my spicy take too. Web three is nothing. <laughs> it's nothing. <laughs> that's personal takes, not the official position of Google or any Google, you know, whatever. Blah blah. It's our personal feelings. Making sure people know that somebody's going to be like, Google said Web three was nothing, and then the Web three people are going to, you know, yeah. attack us in flux. Uh, yeah, sure. What is your opinion about? Okay. Go ahead, sorry. I was gonna say, like, before we get to this next question, right? This is like, I think people have a lot of like misconceptions about big companies like Google, where it's like, there's not one person walking around who is the Google and like making statements right. and making decisions, right? There's like tens of thousands of people who are all doing their best with their, their personal expertises and flaws. And like, you know, you see articles on the verge, like Google says this, Google says that. It's like, Google's not a person. <laughs> <laughs> right. A lot of people, a lot of opinions. Uh, speaking of opinions, oh, what is our opinion about Narwhal, like the index? So this project have any official support from us? And do you think it's a good direction in the Angular ecosystem? Uh, I want to take a stab at this one. Yeah. So index, the tooling started off as being built on top of the Angular CLI and the original, like some of the earlier like versions of that tooling system. And then they evolved it and made it their own fantastic project. Um, you're going to hear us say this a lot. Everything is great. And if you're able to use like NX and hit your project goals and ship your projects and have a good developer experience, you should use it, right? If, if it's going to solve problems for you. So do I think it's a good direction in the ecosystem? I mean, the ecosystem, it's hard to say what's a good direction for the ecosystem because you all are the ecosystem. You get to decide and build and do things. So I don't think that's for us to decide. Yeah, and I'll say like NX is there, you know, definitely a partner of the Angular team, and we like we are appreciative of everybody in the Angular ecosystem who builds tools and solutions for Angular developers. Um, I know we we've talked to a lot of like especially larger enterprise customers of Angular who are all on NX, and they all seem very happy with it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Nice right. job, Jessica. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I this game is so good. Like you just learn. You just mm -hmm. learn. You just learn, learn by doing. Yeah. All right, Josh, developer says, "What would you say for the future of Angular is upcoming in five years, especially with AI is coming out in our area too." So it's a big question, right? And one that is challenging for us to even answer for ourselves of like five years mm -hmm. is a long time, mm -hmm. especially in the web front end ecosystem. And mm -hmm. maybe the best I can say is I was talking about, you know, Alex and I's ng-conf earlier. That's probably yep. the most we've said publicly so far about like the future direction of Angular, where we, we are acknowledging that the trade-off space Angular has today uh, is maybe not the best tr set of trade-offs for a lot of developers. And we're looking at revisiting a lot of the kind of underpinning technical decisions of Angular and innovating and coming up with new approaches for things. Um, so, you know, our reactivity system, the way components are authored, the, like, the set of APIs and um, libraries that are kind of like bundled into Angular all of these things that we're thinking about. Um, I think definitely one thing we'll probably, like now this is just more speculation territory. I think our, our server-side rendering story uh, is going to uh, see a lot of work over time. And I think um, there'll be uh, some more, you know, performance-oriented things in the more uh, 
medium term <laughs> of uh, you know trying to help people with things like core web vitals. You were on the right track with that last pass, Jessica. Yeah, you so, almost had it. Yeah. Right. No, go back down. So if you go back down, yeah, you got it. If you go back down and hit that corner first. Yeah, there you go. Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. Awesome. Yeah, you had it. I was like, oh, yeah, she's right there. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, everything Jeremy said is right. Because, you know, Jeremy is giving that value. How can I create a web component with Angular, Angular elements? Yeah, you can use Angular Elements. Um, you can also use something like Stencil. I don't know that we have a very strong opinion about like a best way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, I have some ideas about uh, future evolution of Angular Elements, but they're probably too early to really talk about. <laughs> mm, okay, then don't 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 hint about it. Uh, what about this though? What's your opinion on RX Angular? Can it be integrated into an Angular repo for better performance? Better performance is a really hard thing to quantify. Yeah, this this is our favorite answer to give, which is it depends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so yeah, like I think like there's a variety of different state management solutions for Angular out in the ecosystem. And there's like with all of software engineering, right? There's never one right solution. There's no silver bullet that's right. the perfect technical solution for every problem. And so things like RX Angular and NGRX and uh, NGXS, all of these things, you know, they're slightly different and it's up to you as the application developer to look at these things and figure out what is going to work best for the product that you're building. Um, that said, you know, we are always looking at how do we improve Angular and the primitives that we provide as part of Angular to make building and choosing solutions like that mm -hmm. easier. Yeah, this isn't mm -hmm. right. Um, go back to like the left part, and if you go up from there. Up from here? Yeah, this is what I did before. I didn't like it. Do you bifurcate? And then come down here, and then do that. Then uh, but then you skipped there. one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, dot, the black dot that's underneath that bottom white one is really, that's rough. That's here? Um, actually, well, you on. have one, back, one dot that's left out, right? Yeah, go back a bit. Because you've Which got one dot? black one mixed in there. You just have to exclude that one black one. Yeah. Which black one do I have mixed in? Um, go so go up one grid. Yeah, oh, go the back left. There. Yeah, see right there, that black yeah. one is in there. So go up around that black one. The, the this sorry, the black, black one here. Yeah, that black one. Yeah. And then, right. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got, you had it. I'm, I'm confused. What you're saying here. <laughs> Because so, I have to go through this. Yeah, now and go I have up. to split all of these. Yeah, yeah, but go back a little up. No, yeah, cross cross the black one, and then go immediately up and around, and then down. Yeah. Uh, ooh. Hold on, hold on. Okay, I see. Make a bigger, make a bigger, basically a bigger loop around that, so you can hit the black one on the path on the way back. All right, as we're You're problem solving that. <laughs> so go up see, from okay. here. And then okay, uh, see. one more. One more up. And then two right. And then down. Mm -hmm. Except for I can't. <sighs> oh, you have to include those in your path. Yeah. Yes. I didn't know These that. These have to be I'll included. Start. And I've been trying uh... to split split these i didn't i don't think you have to do a right angle no you, know, you just have to to segregate all of the white ones from the black ones yeah so like shouldn't this be fine which, which when you say it out loud actually i was gonna say as you say it out loud is ngrx a native <laughs> angular system for state management or is it an external library it's external fernando uh, we don't maintain NGRX, but it is uh, one of the great community projects out there. Okay, let's see. 
Uh, we use Angular Elements for building micro front ends. Can you talk a little bit about how we can use Angular Elements as standalone components in this infrastructure? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure what the, what's there to say, but I'm not sure what there is to say about it. Um, Got it. Good job. Let's go. Uh, you got the door open. Jessica got it. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Backseat gaming. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really sure what to say about this. Like standalone components just give you the ability. So think about what standalone components do for you in your application. They give you the ability to create a component that manages its own dependencies in the component and is not bound to an ng module, right? So that's what you get. So I don't know if that changes how you do an angular element right or something like that so just kind of consider that yeah. uh i feel like there's some there's some questions in here that are some very easy answer ones sure let's, let's keep going through them uh master class on how to create an entire project without ng zone if we ever arrive at the place where there is no ng zone we will teach you how to do it oh, yeah so i will say well we are absolutely we've had this on our our road our public roadmap forever right we are absolutely working on a path towards having a much more ergonomic angular experience without zones uh stay tuned for more information on what that will look like <laughs> mm -hmm. material three yeah jeremy talked about it so yeah uh, yeah i mentioned that earlier uh, that is in our uh our plans to support that um i do see another thing in here that's asking about like material three slash material u one thing to clarify, which I, I realize this is very confusing terminology, is the like term material U is specific to Android. That is a like mm -hmm. a purely Android thing, whereas material three is the uh, broader design umbrella that will include web as well. All right. So for the sake of getting through these questions, Jeremy, we're going to have to express a little bit more brevity in our answers because we have a ton um can angular be resumable or support hydration like astro or quick in the future uh jessica can you answer this yes so we are actively looking at hydration right now um we're doing a lot of experimentation we have uh, a couple of prototypes we're working on and we're very excited about what that could look like uh, we know uh up to this point we've only had what we call destructive hydration meaning not really hydration. We destroy the app and recreate it. Um, and um, we just have some very, very promising prototypes that show that hydration is something that we can actually do. So we're, we're really um, looking forward to what the next few months will bring. So keep your eye out for it. Um, I think we're very excited about what hydration can bring and also what the future of server-side rendering will, will look like for us. Yeah. Excellent. In the same vein, uh, Payment asks, what do we think about Quick Framework? I think it's great. Really, lots of potential to do some really cool stuff. Yeah. So if you've watched the stream at all in the past, you know, uh, whenever you ask Mark and I our opinions about things like this, <laughs> the answer is always, it's good. Everything is good. <laughs> yeah. Right. We'll, yep. good. we'll definitely give you a quick opinion for sure. Mm. Right. Um, Marcus says, hey, Jessica and Jeremy, and then didn't leave me out. Hey, man, what's up, Marcus? Good to see you. <laughs> All right. Uh, saw Angular's in a good place on Stack Overflow Survey, and the enthusiasm for the framework is increasing. Thanks for your hard work. No, thank you for being a part of the Angular community, but we appreciate that. Um, let's see. Greetings from, oh, this is nice. Greetings from Germany. Well, greetings to you as well. Let's see what this says. Is it possible to load only styles of the material components used? No. Right now, we're loading all the styles. No. Okay. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> that I, is... I misunderstood the question, Osiris. For a second, I thought you were asking, can you only load the styles without the actual component? And you can't do that. But if you're saying, can you only load the styles for the components that you use and not all the stones? Yes. Uh, go read the theming guide. There's actually instructions in there on how to do that. Each component has its own theme mix-in, and you just need to include the mix-ins for the components that you use instead of the mix-in called all component themes. Right. Uh, do you have any plan for improving adding more schematics in the future? Yes, Kevin. We always are adding more schematics. We're working on ng new schematic to for standalone to just see like what does that world look like. So that's an active development. 
we're always building out these schematics. So yeah, that's yeah. good. Anything else to add, Jeremy? Yes. So one of the projects I've been advocating for for a while, which I unfortunately don't think we're still going to have time to do in the near future, is I want to make a library that makes it way easier for people to author schematics. So for yeah. example, in Angular Material, we often want to do schematics that are like, hey, rename this input, rename this output, mm -hmm. uh, change this constructor signature, um, change the CSS class, things like that, right? They're very basic, very common tasks. And I think it would be great if we just had a library where you could write a schematic that's just basically like rename this CSS class to this CSS class, rename this input to this input, like all of, all stuff mm -hmm. like that. And so I think that's something I'm going to continue uh, proposing advocating in our, for in yeah. team meetings. And uh, I think we'll hopefully get to it someday, but I don't know exactly when. This is my favorite question. My favorite, favorite, favorite question. Is there any plan to create a full video course by the team? Yes, I am literally at the final stages of creating our Angular course. This is also why we're, why we're all tired because we had a really busy impact year. I was hoping to launch it this uh, year. I was hoping to launch it this year, but I'm waiting for some reviews. That's some final feedback from some stakeholders, and one of which may be on this call with us right now. And uh, once those are done, <laughs> once those are done, I'll, I'll be able to film. You said what? We got a lot of email. I know. I know. I know, I know, but yeah, it's, seriously, that's coming. Like, one hundred percent, you can expect to see that uh, soon, and I say soon within like the world of like, yes, this is the thing that we're working on, and it's like not even at the, the planning phase. This is literally at like final reviews, making sure that the content's the best that it can be to support you folks. So yes, Josh, this is happening ASAP. Um, let's see, I'm with the what J. Okay, what like are you guys playing? Okay, wait one second. Javier, what are we playing? You want to play this? It's called The Witness. Mm -hmm. This game is called The Witness. Yes. Wait, this is a good question. Can you add an animation to a create embedded view template? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... I don't think you can. Uh, at least not with the animations framework. Um, like you could put an animation on a DOM node that's inside of an ng template, and then I think that animation would run based on whatever normal conditions it would run when you like create a bedded view and render it into the DOM. Yeah, but you and can't like you put can do on the ng template itself. Yeah, I think you you could you could put it on the parent component and have it query for the child inside there potentially. Okay. Let's see. Uh, Bato asks, is it possible to have an ang have Angular without importing export modules? Seems like standalone components is new single component modules. Uh, without importing export. I, I don't quite understand that part of the question, but I will instead answer what I think is the question of, can you have Angular without ng modules? <laughs> Which is yes, you can have. Um, an Angular app today that is just not using ng modules at all. Yeah, uh, if you're using the standalone APIs. Okay, so here's a good question. <laughs> I like the I love these questions. Um, how about support for creating desktop applications instead of relying on wrappers? I have a spicy take for you, Arjun. This is meant in all love and support of your projects and your success as a developer. The new desktop apps are web apps, in my opinion. So web apps are super powerful these days. So build a good web app and you can do cool things like make it a PWA, which is not a wrapper, but if you made it a PWA, it makes it installable. It makes it work offline. You can still get updates and you can still do like storage of information. I mean, there's lots that you can do and it makes it in, like I say, installable is a bigger thing because otherwise why not go to a web browser, but make it a PWA. And as a PWA, you can actually distribute it on the Microsoft App Store right now, they let you distribute PWAs through their site. I mean, through their App Store that are installable on your on your computer. So yes, that's how it sounds great. So do that that way. Yeah, um, and I will say like from from a kind of a like strategic view on the Angular team, we think our time and the you know limited amount of 
people we have working on the project, right? Like is best spent focused on building the best solution for building web experiences. And if we were to try to split our focus into supporting mobile applications or desktop applications or kind of like other factors there, then I think that would mean we are putting less time and energy behind building great web experiences. And that, that's the thing we really believe in and the thing that we want to do. Excellent answer. I like that. Okay, here's a good one from the Schnau. Says, Ari suggests it's a bit confusing for new developers coming from React. Do you think in the future there will be a way to make unsubscribable automatically without using... Oh, that's interesting. So this isn't a call for removing RxJS, but more guardrails around like memory leaks and unsubscribes. So yeah, I will say that this is something that's on our minds of how to how to make it so that the new developers, um, like in general, the experience is easier, especially when it comes to understanding and using RxJS. I don't have any specifics to talk about right now. Uh, let's see, like, you know, we've thrown an idea, some ideas around like being able to have like a, a destroyed observable that you can inject with the inject function and use that, but that's like still not automatic. Um, I don't know that anything like automatic like that would be something we put in the framework, but, uh, simplifying that onboarding experience is something that we very much are thinking about. Nice one, Jessica. Thank you. Thank you. That's good. I like that one. That was a good, uh, smooth answer. Oh, why is Angular Dart deprecated? I know a lot about this. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. uh, go ahead, Jeremy. If you followed the development of Angular version two way back when, you would remember that the idea was to build one framework that worked in, that was authored in TypeScript and had produced a Dart version of the framework as kind of a side effect. And that kind of worked during development, but it became quickly apparent that it was very limiting because you had to go through a lot of facades, right? So like Dart doesn't have a concept of undefined, right? Dart only has null. And so if you need to deal with undefined in the like TypeScript JavaScript plan, mm -hmm. you need to go mm -hmm. through a facade for that. And similarly, like all DOM operations needed to go through a facade and uh, anything with like timing APIs, right? Like, cause like Dart and, you know, if you're writing a Dart application, you're not using any of these native APIs, you're using the Dart specific implementations that then get compiled down into those APIs again. And so all of that means like there was, you ended up limited to the set of language constructs that was supported in both languages. And you had a lot of extra boilerplate um, for anywhere there was kind of a mismatch. And that added just a lot of friction to everyone. And so what happened after Angular 2 came out was that the Dart team took ownership of uh, Angular Dart and the, you know, the Angular mm -hmm. team stuck with the TypeScript version. And both are still used today inside of Google. So inside of Google, uh, Angular Dart is still actively uh, maintained and developed and is still used um, by some teams around the company. Uh, but that team made a decision some number of years ago now uh, to stop uh, releasing updates as open source. Right. And they made that mm -hmm. decision because that they saw the adoption for Angular Dart just wasn't really hitting the, the mass that would really justify the continued investment in the open source development. And on top of that, uh, Flutter was becoming much more of a part of the like larger Dart organization's work and strategy. And I think that um, having like not being a part of that organization, just kind of as an outside observer, I think that they're kind of like putting their their limited time and energy into Flutter. Um, so. Uh, I was going to say, and they actually uh, released a statement directly. Tim Sneath from that team, one of the leads of the Flutter side, 
uh, and dark side he, he just wrote about it on github about why they you know decided to stop syncing publicly the updates so you can also find that and read that information it's in the repo on github uh control flow analysis implemented in angular templates like not so today. are we talking about oh okay yeah i was like i don't know if we do that um <laughs> not today so right okay. now um control flow in angular is implemented in user space so that means like ng4 and ng if those are just directives and anybody could build ng4 and ng if with the apis provided by the framework they're not like special constructs in the framework itself maybe that will change someday but right now uh it's they're like they are what they are <laughs> mhm mm mhm mm okay let's see uh love, we got those we got those we answered this oh uh it says why does the directive composition api not export all the props by default uh if the article says it does then that's a mistake so yeah the we we had a lot of discussion about this um when we were designing the directive composition api um also like also we refer to it on the team as host directives which i'm going to accidentally do at some point during this conversation so if that's if i say that at some point that's what that means um when you are authoring a component you should have full control over that component's public api that that is a statement that i think is hard to disagree with and the problem with using the host directives where you add um, directives that may be authored by someone else, um, you then, if you automatically expose all of the inputs and outputs of those directives, you are losing control of your component's public API, especially if those directives add or remove, um, or I guess like add or rename things over time, you're like, suddenly there are just like new APIs on your component and maybe you didn't want to expose those. Maybe one of them you want to say like, I want to hide this one and just like always set it to true or always set it to X or whatever. And so by making it always explicit of saying, these are the inputs I'm exposing and this is what I'm going to name them. And these are the outputs I'm, I'm exposing and what I'm going to name them. That component author maintains that full control over their components public API surface. No surprises. Rodwin in the building. Got a shout out Rodwin coming in. Hot. What's going on? A holiday greetings to you as well. Good to see you again. Good to have you back in the stream. We got so many questions, but we are like only 12 minutes left in the stream. Um, so I want to make sure that we get to as many as we can. Let's see. La, 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 so many. Oh, this is a good question. So like, oh, Steve, what's going on? Good, good to catch you again. Uh, do you... Uh, or does Angular 15 Universal and Firebase Cloud Functions play nicely together? Do we know of a working example? I don't know if there's an example of it right now, but that's something I can uh, ping out to the Firebase team. Like, hey, build this real quick. Set this up. Theoretically, they works. should. I don't know of any reason yeah. why they wouldn't. I think we just haven't sat down and built an example. Right. Yeah, I want to take a note to reach out to the Firebase team and be like, hey, can we do this? Like, you know, or can you all build an example to show the streets how to do this? That'd be nice. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see, what state management system would you recommend? Oh, okay, this is a good question. What state management system would you recommend that is either implement NGRX or NGXS? And I want to throw this actually to the community. Uh, there are lots of options here. So community, people who are in the stream, which one do you think? Is it is it easy for you or do you recommend to people? And let's let Javier know why, uh, you know, so it's, I guess support your answer. It's kind of like school. All right. Say why would support your answer. And that way you can help Javier make a good decision. What's up, Brandon Robertson, the building. Good to see you in here. Let's go. Uh, let's see. Mm, yeah. This one's tough. It is. OK, let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's see. So many questions. Oh, okay. Let's see what Ross has to say about this one. Any hints about upcoming improvements to Angular DevTools? Yes. The profiler is great start, but debugging change detection in perf. Uh, there is, there are updates for change detection cycles. You can actually get details on individual cycles now. So make sure you have the latest version of the extension because we released that. 
uh, to give you more control over like uh, checking your change detection cycle. But what's coming up is like dependency tree. You'll be able to like see your uh, your dependency tree in the browser. We're working on that, so that's coming up. Yeah, your your injection hierarchy. Yeah, there you go. Your injection hierarchy. That's the right language. All right, let's see. Hi from Rainier. Hey, what's going on? Good to see you. Um, I was wondering if there's any official Angular certification platform. No. Nope. <laughs> no, we do not if have. Anybody tries Angular to sell platform. you one, it's a scam. <laughs> it's not from us. They, they listen. Their certification may be fine, but it's not from us. If they say it's from us, then they're lying. Definitely oh, scammed crap. out. I had it. I accidentally clicked. Okay, what about this? Do you have any upcoming collabs with the Aurora team? We're always talking yeah. to that team. We love that team. They love the web. We love them. So we're always yeah. talking. Uh, is there anything we can hint toward that we're well, working on with them next? We're working on them with, on hydration. Yeah. Oh, that is a, a collab with Aurora. I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. Omar, I'm glad you like it. We're so glad you like the image directive. For those who don't know, the image directive allows you listen to this. This is so fantastic, right? Built in, all you got to do is it's coming from at angular slash common is there as uh, the image directive. Use ng source instead of source in your images. And guess what you get to do? You get all kinds of hints and insights on how to optimize your image performance but what's even more is that the directive will actually add some of those things for you to help you get some very expedient like loading and you know help you get to that first contentful paint nice and smooth with those uh, images it's really great what does arthur say arthur first off thank you for being around for five plus years we appreciate that and thank you for noticing our hard work arthur says i've been using angular for five plus years it's surprising to see how the framework has evolved over the years Congratulations. Well, thank you. We've been working hard. Oh, <laughs> Jessica, the streets are saying that uh, you look proud after that last one that you did. Uh, so, <laughs> this is, oh, these, are, a, these are pretty tough puzzles. Yeah, well, you've been opening lots, lots of doors. I didn't know this whole game was just these like puzzles. I don't even know as a developer of this game, how do you. You just like sit down with like a grid paper and you just like design puzzles all day for a few months and put them in the game. More more like this several so years. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. Cause I'm like, how do you design this game? Well, uh, this yeah, I believe this I feel like this game was in development for like over five years at least. I'm not sure how you do this one. Okay, we're gonna stop for a moment and make sure Jessica gets this one. Then we'll we'll answer this question from Dimitri. I know the answer to this. Yeah. So, uh, inline functions in Angular templates. I'm gonna put a link uh -huh. in the chat right now, which is a, a oh no, that's not the right one because that's a different computer. Um, let me get this link over here on this computer. I have my chat open on a different computer, so. I'll uh, the link. It was a different thing. So. All right, Jeremy's going to post a link for you, Dimitri. Okay, let's say about this one. Um, Antio says, uh, we see these days that meta frameworks are on fire. Some thoughts on make Angular Universal even better. Uh, you asked the right question at the right time, because guess who's here? Jessica Janik, who knows all about this idea of making uh, Angular Universal even better, so. Well, that's a good question. Um, I have yeah. to look over here because, like, I've got the game yeah. on this monitor, and let's see. Yes, if you uh, want me meta... to make a, a statement about meta frameworks in general, I can do that as separately. Feel, feel from... free, F feel free. But uh, as far as Angular Universal, like, we're we're looking at it holistically. We're uh, trying to identify every bit of pain points that are out there with it. We know. Well, because uh, Angular Universal actually started off uh, not maintained by us. It was a community creation. And we just never really had the time to focus on it and prioritize it until now. And um, there's a lot of research that has to go into that. We're working with people who have worked with all the other, uh, well, not all the other meta frameworks, but uh, uh, other frameworks that have had similar problems so that we don't have to reinvent the wheel as we look at the APIs that uh, Angular Universal has 
we know that like right now, one of the big pain points is that uh, Universal doesn't support ESM and we're uh, in the throes of trying to figure out the best way to move uh, forward with that because it has to do with our DOM emulation library. So there's a lot of blocks that we have to work through to get to something that makes Universal easier to use. Uh, but we also know there's um, other contributors that are building uh, things like analog and we want to be able to support them too. So <laughs> there's a lot to think about. It's not a quick uh, fix solution to make Universal better. Um, I don't know if I would even call having Universal uh, be the most ideal experience, our meta framework. Um, it is closer, I suppose. I don't know. Jeremy, how do you feel about it? Right. So when we talk about meta frameworks, as are commonly discussed in the web ecosystem today, I think there's uh, like three different parts of what constitute a meta framework. There's the front end framework that is running in a browser client. There is the server framework that is running on your like UI node, right? Your like UI server. And there is the infrastructure that ties those two things together, where that infrastructure actually encompasses quite a, quite a number of things, including like a build system and any feature integrations between those two. No. Now, uh, and often like it's pretty commonly accepted that also includes like server side rendering and some amount of hydration as well. And in Angular, we've always had all of the different pieces of this, right? So we have, absolutely, we have the framework that runs on the client side in the browser. We have Angular CLI, which gives you kind of this build system and a test runner infrastructure and um, various like lint and code safety checks and things like that. And so uh, and then, the, you know, Angular Universal has also existed for doing server-side rendering. And what's really missing is the package that puts all of those things together. Um, now, you can have, like, a like there's some debate to be had about what things are, like, necessary to call it a meta framework. So I think one contentious thing is file-based routing, right? Like a lot of things like Next.js and Nuxt and Cellkit, they all have this. It, does that mean that that is a hard requirement for something to be called a meta framework? Mm, right. Maybe, maybe not. Um, where we are today is like, we are focused on just taking the pieces that we have and continuing to improve them over time. So Jessica talked about, you know, improving Angular Universal and server-side rendering and hydration is something we are uh, invested in and is on our roadmap. Um, we are improving Angular CLI. Uh, one of the projects, you know, going around right there is right now is working on ES build support and uh, having that as kind of an alternative to what we have today with Webpack. And I can't say right now that we're going to, you know, put a lot of time and energy into building a more like fixed solution that has all of these things uh, out of the box in the same way that some of these other solutions do, but it's not something I would say never to. Mm -hmm. All right, friends, we're at the end of our stream. It's, it's, we've been playing and chatting for an hour. We had so many questions today that I feel like we can go for another two hours to answer all the questions. But here's what I can say. Uh, it's been a blast. I've had a fantastic time this year streaming with you, Jeremy. This has been great. Yeah, let's do more of it. I want to, you know, when I get my new streaming setup ultimately figured out, then and it's going to be so much nicer. Yeah, now, this is great. So what Jessica figured out to share it this way, this has been great because this is probably the best frame rate we've gotten from the stream uh, mm -hmm. so far. Yeah. So this is this might be a solution. I don't know if it's the only solution, but I'm gonna maybe try something like this next time I have to play. But I'm also excited about building new games. Uh, friends in the chat, listen, you all have been fantastic. We do the stream for you, for the people, for the streets. So thank you for being a part of this and supporting us. Uh, 2022 has been fantastic with you all, and 
be ready for what we do in 2023. More streaming, more games, more building stuff, more Q and A's, and just really more building great apps. All right, friends, any last words? Uh, Jessica, Jeremy? Get on Mastodon. Get on Mastodon. <laughs> Never. And uh, happy holidays. Never that. Never Mastodon. Get off of Mastodon. No, what are you hey, Absolutely okay. not. <laughs> uh, no Mastodon for me, but that's right, friends. All right, happy holidays, friends. Go build great apps. Take care. <laughs>